In this, the final chapter, we'll look at some practical steps we can take to stop child killing in our generation. But before we do, let's consider a key aspect of this spiritual battle, as well as a characteristic that will create a Josiah generation, fork lightning Christians that will tear down the high places and stop the offerings to Moloch. While there are over 6 billion people on planet Earth right now, there's a sense, from what theologians call a federal perspective, that there really are only two people, the first and then the second or last Adam. All of us were born into this world in the likeness and through the lineage of the first Adam. Fallen, locked in our ego boxes, my will be done, forms the bars in our prison of original sin. But by the amazing grace of God, we can be born again after the likeness of the new and last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, where thy will be done becomes the cry of our hearts. Now listen carefully. Just as there is an upward trajectory for those who are born again in the likeness of the last Adam, as we've seen one that takes us from strong affection to the greater love where we're willing to lay down our lives for others. So there's also a downward trajectory for those who are the first Adam. Its nadir, its lowest point? Well, there's no greater selfishness than this, that someone would lay down the life of his child for his own convenience. In the battle for life, against child sacrifice and all its many permutations. The enmity that is between the seed of the woman, the church, and the seed of the serpent, the devil, finds perhaps its greatest expression. This is where heaven and hell meet. Heaven will win, but for America, it may well be when God raises up an enemy to do to us what the Romans did to Carthage. Abraham Lincoln said in his second inaugural address, fondly do we hope, fervently do we pray that this scourge of war may speedily pass away. But if God wills that it continue until every drop of blood drawn by the lash must be repaid by that drawn by the sword, let it be said that the judgments of the Lord are righteous and true altogether. He understood that the civil war was God's drawn sword. And if 600,000 men died on the battlefields of the Civil War for that bloodshed, what is it going to mean to America if he deals with us for the blood of 50 million babies? The only hope for a victory that preempts that level of judgment is for a spiritual revival and national repentance like Israel experienced in Josiah's reign. And while these great gifts are for the sovereign Lord to give, there is no question that we have a responsibility to prepare the way of the Lord. And that can only happen if a significant remnant, and that may, or rather should include you, become forked lightning Christians who love, who agape God, and are willing to lay down their lives for others. America is becoming increasingly ungodly, humanistic, and even pagan, in a large part because the church has become complacent, worldly, and culturally irrelevant. As Jesus made clear, when the salt loses its saltiness and the light becomes dark, it's little wonder when the culture the church is called to serve begins to rot. Most modern Christians are ignorant of the historical precedent for revival, even in the face of militant paganism. With pagan immorality being codified at the highest levels of government, there's a great need for the church to fulfill her prophetic role in resistance to idolatry.
Is it still possible for God's people to turn the tide towards righteousness? So that we don't succumb to defeatism, let's consider the dark days Israel experienced when she was in bondage to slavery in Egypt. In that day, thousands of baby boys were slaughtered by Pharaoh in an attempt to stamp out the prophetic deliverer who was about to come on the scene. Although Satan tried to do away with Moses, his life was spared and he grew to be a man within the Pharaoh's own courts. Later, Moses delivered Israel out of bondage. In Elijah's day, the prophets of Baal sacrificed thousands of the firstborn on altars in defiance of God's law. Yet Elijah slew the prophets of Baal, and God later raised up a company of 7,000 young men who defeated King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. Then, just before Jesus was born, the wicked King Herod learned through the Magi that another king was about to be born in Bethlehem. A great slaughter of innocent babies ensued, yet the baby Jesus' life was spared and he grew to be the one that would deliver the entire cosmos from the bondage of sin and Satan. Often throughout redemptive history, a sense of great darkness, sometimes punctuated with a massacre of innocence, is the very womb from which God brings forth a deliverer and a great deliverance. Could history be repeating itself? Although the hour is dark for America and over 50 million children have been slaughtered, there may yet be a prophetic generation from among the survivors who will go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah to confront wickedness, stop the massacre of innocence, and see our nation turn back to God. If that generation does come on the scene, here is what it must do.